turns out that scientists as far back as the early 1900s have been developing alternative ways to access electricity without combustion. Nikola Tesla believed he had tapped into what he called radiant energy. Many scientists believe he was accessing what's now called free energy. But before Tesla could finish the project, his financier, banker J.P. Morgan, who had a monopoly on the copper used for electrical lines, recognized how Tesla's invention could transmit electricity without wires. He then shut down Tesla's funding. Tesla's lab was burned down and he was ostracized, all for trying to implement his vision of unlimited energy for everyone. Every time I found an inventor with a promising new technology in the field of free energy, he told a similar story of suppression. Inventor John Bedini began working with Tesla's theories of radiant energy decades ago and has produced an assortment of battery charging devices that generate more energy than it takes to run them. He announced that he was going to start offering them at low cost. Soon after that, he was attacked in his lab and warned not to produce the devices. For his own safety, he had to let go of marketing free energy. What is radiant energy? If you're talking about radiant energy, to me, what do I consider radiant? Okay, what I consider radiant is the capturing of a spike. I consider that radiant. You know, anything that, say, I generate the radiant energy. I do that by my coils, my switching circuits. That's how I generate radiant energy. In other words, what I'm saying is that I'm only concerned with a sharp transient in the spike as far as the radiant goes. You know, as far as negative energy goes, the negative energy comes from the battery. Once I generate this sharp transient and charge the battery, it's a negative effect to the battery because there's no heating of the battery. How do you see radiant energy coming in, John? It seems to be like an ocean wave or a gravitational wave. And it seems to ride in on a some form of gravity wave where it's up and down and up and down and up and in. Sometimes it comes in stronger and sometimes it comes in a lot lighter. Well, it, cha it does change. You know, this, this wave does change uh, during, say, a full moon. Some of these motors have been known during a full moon to speed up just a little bit. You know, they actually go a little bit faster at night and a little bit slower during the day. We would want free energy. We would want an endless supply of free energy if we were able to tap into this. Mm -hmm. There are powers that be on this planet that don't want that to happen. They make money selling oil and electricity and natural gas. How do we combat that? How do you combat that? Well, I combat it and uh, instead of, you know, they visited me and they said, uh, you know, Smith, what are you doing? And I told them what I was doing. They already knew what I was doing. And they were like, don't teach anyone about this. And they said, you know, don't hook it up to the grid and you'll be okay. You know, yeah, but don't, once you don't, do don't that, try stuff. So what are you going to do now? You got a working system. Yeah, it's not what we wanted. And the whole thing is to like they did not want you to succeed. Right. So I, the way I was able to bring it out of the closet was I hooked up a battery to it. Is this the Bedini system? The, well, this is a this is a modified Bedini system. The third one he made. It's a very, it's the only high voltage Bedini system that I'm aware of. It's not the ones you see on Amazon or on TV. This, right. is, this is a very let's take a look. At yeah, please this. check this Here we out. Go. This is amazing. What's going on over here? So look, this is self oscillation. So we got a nice pulse train. That was all yours? So the pulse train is self oscillation. So the system is set up so it's biased. So when it turns off, it creates, you know, a reverse field and turns back on and creates a, the other side and it goes back and forth. And if it's a big enough magnetic field, it means it can self oscillate. So it is self-oscillating, but it's oscillating on the trigger, which is cool. But you can stop the rotor and turn it off, and it'll still self-oscillate constantly. So the rotor is just spinning for no reason, to be honest, because it's the more spikes you can get, the better. But now you've got some rotation. There's like no torque there, of course. Almost 400 RPM, speeding up. 
very slowly. And um, I do have a bank of resistors here. These are all in parallel just to get lower resistance playing with that. One's got to look at it like nervous energy. You know, like firing nerve impulses. You can draw the parallels between how your nerves fire and, and, and what the radiant energy looks like. Today we would say, you know, it's negative energy. But uh, it is different to use. Your, your mind has to think backwards on a lot of things that we were all taught in electronics or in our electrical circuits and in power systems and so forth. And what we found out is when we apply conventional electronics to it, you don't get the same radiant output. Negative energy is energy the surrounding vacuum or surrounding space-time is always desperately trying to force into your negative energy flow and increase it. And what we call conductivity is the ability to prevent that from happening. And so pretty soon he's working in a fashion that the normal textbook guy can't even follow. And when you sit there and scratch your head looking at it, you can't figure out how it's working on it. One day in the future, I think that eventually we'll be able to power the world with negative energy, very cheaply and very clean. And you can come out with an enormous gain. We'll be able to take a flashlight battery and power New York City, at least in theory. Well, that would be a marvelous thing because think of how much coal and oil and all that you would save. So as far as the biosphere is concerned, you could really clean up the biosphere. Off, it creates, you know, a reverse field and turns back on and creates a, the other side and it goes back and forth. And if it's a big enough magnetic field, it means it can self-oscillate. You developed that? Yeah, I helped build that. Okay. You know, the Bedini brothers were the ones that we acquired it from a long time ago and uh, it was funny or not funny it was unfortunate and actually horrific when we started to do the validation on this just a few years ago um does it work yes it works great but we, we had come across, <laughs> across a couple stumps and it was like well this is called you know john up and uh and see you know maybe he could say something and we did and we couldn't get a hold of him so i said well call his brother uh -oh. up and we were like they called me and said uh john died oh and I said, well, just call his brother. And they said, well, he died too at the exact oh, same my. time. What are the odds at of that? At the exact same time. And no one talks about this. Jeez. It's like, why don't people talk about this? And they did. They went over, the, they stepped over the lines because they were selling, you know, the way they teach you how to do this once we acquire the, the main system. It, you know, it's a very secret way to look at the camera on, you know, when you're doing a YouTube video to help people learn how to make these because you can't just tell them how to make it you have to figure it out. So with the help of you know, this young man and about 300 other, uh, 350. Is that why his face was covered? Yeah, 350 other people with wearing cameras as we're working on this system, him and I day and night. Right. 300, 300 other scientists are watching, helping us talk to us. Like, don't cut that wire, solder uh -huh. this one. You okay. Know? So it's a collective. So I can't say it to myself, and since I started this program, you know, 10 years ago with my five scientists, and then had to come get it validated uh, using the world's 300 scientists. It was a beautiful right. thing to know that you know we accomplished it. My love Think a 13 year old could change the world? Well, this one might change your mind. Dressed in his lab coat. Yeah, I, I wear this uh, fairly often. Max Lahan sits in his parents' old boiler room, converted into a lab. I am in a boiler room right now. And he ponders the future often. The future that I imagine is the future, frankly, that we all imagine. He wants to make the world a better place. And to do that, you need one single thing. If you got energy, you got power, you have everything. So to solve this problem, a few months ago, Max took the matter into his own hands and created this electromagnetic harvester out of a coffee can, some wire, two coils, 
and a spoon. This cost me 14 bucks. The harvester conducts radio waves, thermal and static energy and turns it into electricity. This wire takes the energy from the air. Down below here, we turn it from AC into DC. So we take the device outside and wrap up Max's brother into a string of LED lights. Bing! <laughs> a $14 invention was able to do that. So imagine the same harvester on a scale 20 times larger. I'm very proud of him. Max's family is thrilled with what he's accomplished, and nobody is more impressed than his twin brother, Jack. Creating free energy, a device that he made in his lab out of 15 bucks, which is pretty amazing. As cheesy as this sounds, from day one on this planet, I knew that I was put on here for a reason, and that reason is to invent, to bring the future. Max has always admired Albert Einstein and inventor Nikola Tesla. They taught him a little bit more than just science. Make the world a better place, to give the world what it doesn't have so that it doesn't have to struggle in basic things like energy. Max isn't in it for the money or the recognition. My true goal is to help, to invent a future where people can be happy, people can be safe and sound. That's one kid with a whole lot of power.